So I would like to invite the second team, the team from Rotman. They were just waiting outside. These are the rules. So guys, the stage is yours. Yep. Um, good afternoon, everyone. We're uh, the team from University of Toronto, Rotman. Uh, we have here Shini, Jessica, and Michael, and I'm Gonen. Uh, we're really excited to be here, and we thank the university for, uh, for including us in this, in this uh, competition. Um, and thank you for the, for the company for the interesting case. Um, so we are here to tell you our strategic recommenda recommendations for how uh, Nano Dimension can become a global, uh, a global player uh, by 2020. Um, so our, uh, our strategic recommendation is, uh, is uh, composed of two um, main, uh, main uh, parts. The first one is um, three quick wins, uh, we like to call it, three tactics that will allow the company to generate revenues uh, fast to support the two other uh, long-term strategies moving the company forward into the future. Um, so the three quick wins are first to expand the, the potential market uh, by targeting the PCB manufacturers, selling the printers directly to them in a way that they can also um, be, be, become uh, customers uh, to, to the company. The second one is implement an encry encryption um, that will allow the companies that are uh, concerned about, uh, about security of the, of the IP um, to get this, uh, this component from using uh, PCB manufacturers. And the third, to incorporate uh, machine learning algorithms to optimize the, the printing process. Um, in terms of the, of the long-term strategies, the first one is to expand the prototyping uh, offerings from more than just PCBs, but to include it in a, in a larger uh, electronics market. Um, and the second uh, strategy is to become a global manufacturing for, for um, um, PCBs for brain-computer interface. So the company, you all know, you heard the, the chief uh, business officer earlier. We're not going to get into too much details. They do 3D printing for, uh, for PCBs and currently addressing the, the prototyping uh, services by, by offering uh, inks that are both conductive and dielectric. Um, in terms of the, of the current competitive advantages that we recognize, we have four that we think are, will drive the company, um, right, are driving the success of the company right now and will continue to do this in, into the future. Um, the first one is material expertise. Um, the company has been able to develop uh, unique inks, both conductive and dielectric, and they will be able to do it moving into the future. Uh, complex printing. Everything is becoming smaller. Um, and more complicated, the company can, uh, can print uh, thin uh, PCBs uh, with uh, high precision and also with, uh, with a very narrow, um, very fine traces. Um, third, all-in-one solution. Um, the company is offering a factory in a box and they can really uh, save a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, dealing with suppliers by offering this. And lastly, they have a, a very strong R&D uh, capabilities, and this is something that the company is really focusing on. Um, in terms of the mega trends that we identify in the industry, and we think all are supporting uh, the company and will allow them to, to really uh, capitalize on that. Um, the first one, as I mentioned, everything is getting smaller and need a shorter product cycles. Um, so you can see that there are uh, high growth categories in the electronic markets. Um, like sensors, antennas, batteries, and, and, and uh, electromechanical systems. They all fit um, potentially a, a, customer, a, a product segments that, uh, that the company can, uh, can serve. Um, in terms of other trends, we see optimizing for functionality and not, um, of, uh, not uh, manufacturing, meaning that the, the, the products are becoming more complicated to manufacture. Um, and we see also mass customization. Um, it's not about mass production, it's more about um, being able to, to be flexible in the manufacturing process and, and offer this uh, tailored solution. And, um, and thirdly, uh, we have the multi-part uh, integration, uh, meaning a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, materials combined. Uh, right now, the company can offer um, just conductive and dielectric, but in the future, they can offer additional one and this is uh, really uh, a key thing to offer integrated electronics uh, uh, into the future. 
Um, in terms of competition, uh, we identified three verticals that the company is currently uh, competing in. One is the cost, um, the, third is, uh, the second is precision, and the third is multiple materials. Um, if, we think, if we look at each of the competitors, um, the company cannot compete with um, on the same vertical, but as a whole, the company offers the best um, integrated solution. So they won't be the cheapest uh, printer, but they will be the best in terms of if you combine the cost, precision, and multiple layers. Now Shini will take us through the three quick wins. Great. Thank you, Gonan. So before diving into the two proposed strategies, we want to propose three quick wins to drive revenue in the immediate term. And these tactics are critical to bring in capital in order to make the other two strategies successful. So these three are um, having a, a going after suppliers that also, uh, we're going to become the suppliers for PCC manufacturers that offer prototyping as a service, encryption, as well as artificial intelligence. So according to the survey data by NanoDynamic, uh, a little over 20% of the companies out there currently spend over 100K on uh, prototyping. This means 70% of the prototyping spending is done by groups that currently can't afford the Dragonfly 2020, and which means NanoDimension is not going after the segment of the user at the moment. So what we recommend is targeting the PCB manufacturers, and this way we'll be able to increase the market size from 80 million to 1.8 billion. So if you look at the chart, you can see the growth. Uh, the incentive for PCB manufacturers is that they will be able to use the printers and create these highly customizable prototype for the customers. So this one goes hand in hand with the first uh, tactic. Uh, it is to offer a, uh, a separate, uh, it, it is to target a separate uh, customer segment. So currently the customers of PCP manufacturers have a variety of security needs. And Nano Dimensions really only targeting the companies that have high security needs. And the heart of the market, which are the medium security needs, customers are not being addressed. So what we're proposing is that we want to introduce this encryption process, uh, which allows the clients to be able to send their encrypted design files directly to the printer without the third uh, party interference. So this feature will really help the BCP manufacturers to attract more customers and also increase sales in the future. So the last tactic we're proposing is to leverage machine learning to really optimize the printing process. So machine learning is essentially a set of algorithms that allow a computer to analyze historical and existing data without really having the computer implicitly, uh, explicitly programmed. The application of machine learning can be really applied in the 3D printing process and improve a lot of the existing ways they're doing things. So for example, optimize the print head movements to improve uh, printing speed, track failures in the printing process to predict and prevent failures in the future. Also, we can use the algorithms to really optimize the printing path. And finally, improve the existing software algorithms to uh, have more efficient print head movements. So by uh, implementing these tactics, uh, we project that Daniel Ben mentioned will be able to uh, realize revenue in the very short term. On the left-hand side, you can see the financial projection by Edison. On the right-hand side are the projection, uh, financial projections done uh, with the tactics integrated. So as you can see, we'll be able to realize revenue in the really short term within two years because we're selling to a new customer segment with the technological capabilities. So now Michael is going to walk us over the, second, uh, the first strategy. Thanks, Jenny. So once you've implemented the three quick wins, it's time to start choosing a strategy for the longer term. I'm going to present the first one, which is a modular printing system. Before I do that, however, I have to clarify the evaluation criteria we're going to use to decide which strategy we think to recommend. We've come up with four criteria. The first is that the, this, whatever strategy we choose has to become profitable within two years. This is a publicly traded company. Your shareholders are not going to wait a long time for you to start showing positive returns. Secondly, we want to build on Nano Dimension's current competitive advantages. Third, we want to position the company to capture as much growth in the market as they can. And finally, we want to choose a leading edge strategy over a bleeding edge strategy because we want something that is readily commercializable, again, for quick returns. The way we propose to do this with the first strategy is to create a modular printing system. Right now, what Nano Dimension does is they have their silver nanoparticle ink, which is conductive, and their dielectric nanopolymer ink. And they're taking these two types of ink along a, a development path that is currently targeting prototyping, prototyping, people who make prototypes, 
Eventually, they want to go to low volume production, and one day in the future, even to mass manufacturing, when they can get the unit cost of each item down to be competitive with, with 3D printing, competitive with mass manufacturing. What we're proposing is that they open up a number of parallel development paths along these same lines. And they do that by introducing new types of ink and new print heads to their system. So that essentially a customer can choose what type of ink they'd like, what kind of print heads they'd like, depending on whatever, is the, whatever kind of materials the electronics manufacturer is using. Now, we've listed some types of dielectric ink and some types of conductive ink. All of these hold promise because they are currently either in development or in use in industry but the opportunity exists to make them 3D printable using the inkjet technology that this company specializes in. Here are some examples of products with high growth potential that are using printed circuits. So PCBs where the company is playing now, but also RFID tags, micro batteries, OLED displays, and many more. These products are unified by the fact that they are using printed circuits, they require precision, they're quite small, and they all have high growth potential, which positions them ideally for nano, nano dimensions corporate strategy. The effect of this is quite positive. As you can see, they're currently playing in a 12 billion market, 12 billion dollar market. If they expand to target the electronics industry as a whole, basically every type of electronics manufacturer who would want to, use, to make prototypes and would benefit from their existing corporate strengths, that expands to a 96 billion dollar market with double the CAGR. We think that's very positive and will allow this company to harness growth. It also allows them to be flexible. They don't have to choose just one niche within the electronics industry. They can target all electronics manufacturers who require prototypes, which allows the company to be opportunistic in the kind of customers that they target. We think this strategy is positive because it builds on their existing strengths. The, the, the sales pitch that the company gives you today, which is they can help you make prototypes faster, they can help you do multiple materials, and they'll help protect your, your intellectual property by keeping your prototyping close to the vest. All of these existing strengths are enhanced by our strategy. Moreover, we add a fourth strength, which is modularity and flexibility, which is giving the customers choice in what it, which materials they want to use, which print heads they want to use, and again, allows our company to be opportunistic without pigeonholing themselves. Uh, we have a go-to-market strategy, and I want to highlight two points regarding this. The first is that for research and development, we want the company to remain open so that they can either partner with existing uh, people who have are existing developers who have already developed certain ink technologies like they did with Hebrew University or to develop their own on a case by case basis. Secondly, I want to talk about the resources required which is that they're going to have to start developing uh, new inks and new print heads which we think place to their current strengths as a R&D focused company. So the, the, the uh, financial projections are quite positive. You can see that in the beginning, we're calling for increased costs and an annual burn rate increase at 50%, which, is acknowledge, which acknowledges the kind of investment that they're going to have to make in research. But as time goes on, in subsequent years, you can see that the revenue is actually growing quite quickly. And the reason for that is that they're selling more printers and for each, because they have a, a larger target audience in the market, and for each printer they're selling, they're potentially selling more types of inks because they're doing multiple materials. So it has longer, it has a, in the longer term, it has much greater positive effects on their revenue. Um, there are some risks that we have to highlight. Uh, I'm going to talk about two. The first under technology is that this requires development of some new technology which does not yet exist, uh, but we think we mitigate that risk by being open to partnerships and being opportunistic in how they go about it. Secondly, it does require quite a bit of scaling up. Um, but we think we mitigate that risk by playing to the existing strengths of the company. They already have good relationships with distributors. That helps them scale up their customer relationships. They already have a good partnership agreement with Flextronics, and that helps them scale up their production. And we've allocated funding for their internal use for scaling up production of the inks, which we agree should be kept in-house because that protects their key competitive advantage and their intellectual property. So that's our first strategy, which we think is quite positive. And now we're going to go to Jessica for our second strategy. Thanks, Michael. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to present our out-of-the-box strategy to you, which is uh, for Nanodynamics to become a manufacturer of PCBs for, for brain-computer interface products. 
so essentially what I'm talking about here is neural te technology. If you're not familiar, uh, neuroprosthetics. These are put inside of the body, sometimes fully implanted, sometimes only partially implanted. Uh, these are used in a wireless microelectronic way. Uh, if you haven't heard of it before, essentially what's happening is the electronic is interfacing with your nervous system. It is restoring whatever motor, sensory, or autonomic function that you've lost and it's bypassing the neural deficits that are caused by diseases such as multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, et cetera. Um, in terms of a, a business model, we think this is an opportunity for NanoDimension to really leverage the proprietary knowledge they have around inks. So by using inks such as titanium and silicone, we believe this is an opportunity to sell customized PCBs to go into products such as cochlear implants or deep for deep brain stimulation. For those not familiar, these have been around for a couple of decades. Cochlear implants are used specifically for hearing, and deep brain stimulation is used uh, most frequently with Parkinson's patients. More sort of cutting edge products that are uh, currently being um, experimented with in clinical trials include spinal implants. For example, those who suffer from severe paralysis are able to, um, through these spinal implants, gain a sense of feeling again or perhaps for someone who's amputated uh, robotic limbs that through this computer technology in their brain, they're able actually to feel a sense of touch in using those limbs. Um, and then in terms of a current addressable market uh, for this, uh, the uh, health issues that I described, we estimate that about 60 million people worldwide actually suffer from these issues, um, and that about three and a half million people are diagnosed annually. And so based on our estimations, we see that this is a four and a half billion dollar market with a 20% CAGR. In terms of a go-to-market strategy, uh, what I really want to emphasize, oops, pardon me. Uh, what I really want to emphasize in terms of the competitive advantage uh, is that we're harnessing your existing competitive advantage for nanodynamics, but also it's requiring new competitive advantage. So already you have the ability for customization. Because these are being implanted into human bodies, they require unique customization to each patient which results in low volume orders. Uh, however, because they're being put inside the body, they actually require a lot of R&D development around flexible and stretchy boards that won't damage tissue, uh, which means essentially the PCB needs to be biocompatible and not rejected by the body. So in terms of the go-to-market strategy, uh, as I mentioned, R&D is very significant for this strategy. Uh, we believe that the only way for this to work is for you to significantly partner with those who are already working in this space. DARPA has the Brain Initiative. They're doing a ton of research and running a lot of clinical trials on the types of products I'm mentioning. In terms of channel sales, there are a number of medical device companies. I've listed a few of those that are already producing these kinds of devices. Um, and then you'll need to scale up in sort of new different talent that's required because these inks are different than the ones you're currently working with. Uh, we believe that if you do work uh, through clinical trials, that there's a path to commercialization by 2020. In terms of profit, we do see that you'll be profitable by 2019, showing more profit by 2020. We've put a few different assumptions in here. The CAGR for the computer uh, brain interface market is 20%. We can answer any further questions later in the Q&A if you're interested. And then lastly, I want to just address a few risks. Obviously, this is a very risky strategy that uh, I've just described. So regulation is for sure the most important risk to discuss. Um, the bottom line is that uh, organizations such as the FDA are, um, they've put together many committees. There's a lot of guidelines in place uh, to do this kind of work. And so we believe if you work in, in sort of parallel with these organizations, there's an opportunity to try to move progress forward. And then the other issue uh, that I'll talk about is technology. So it's a question of whether you'll actually be able to synthesize this biocompatible ink. And so that's why we think the clinical trials working with these medical device companies is essential to any sort of success with this strategy. So now I'm going to pass it over to Gonen to give you our final recommendation. Thank you, Jessica. So as much as we like both of the strategies and believe that they both have a meaningful uh, prospects for the company, we had to choose one. So with the combination of the three proposed uh, tactics and uh, the all-in-one all additive manufacturing prototype, we think that's the way to go, uh, simply because it follows the current efforts of the company. It fits naturally into what the company is currently doing with PCBs, only on a larger offering of, of products within the electronics market. Um, the, the financial uh, outcomes, which are obviously very important in this case, are much better. And uh, lastly, it's a gr significantly growing uh, market, and we'll uh, will continue to do so in the in the next in the 
uh, foreseen future. Um, in terms of, the, of our criteria for evaluation of the strategy, uh, clearly the strategy is fitting all, thank you, um, is fitting all the four criteria. It becomes profitable in two years. Uh, it takes advantage of uh, Nano Dimensions competitive, current competitive advantages. Um, it, captures a it captures growth within the existing market and also expand beyond that. And lastly, it's a leading edge. It's a viable, uh, it's a viable um, um, market. It's a viable industry. And it's not too much in the future. And commercialization is viable within the next, uh, within the next two years. Um, so this is our presentation. We want to thank you for, uh, for your time and listening. And we're now open for questions. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, could you please go back to slide number 13? Uh, you described that uh, with the free quickwins, you achieve much higher uh, revenue and uh, EBITDA yeah. in the uh, coming years. Could you please be a bit more specific? Uh, what is the contribution of each uh, specific element to this, or how did you calculate this additional uh, revenue? Uh, for sure. So, uh, Okay, so basically the current um, market size, the way we estimated it is that it's all the teams that are, all the prototyping teams that are using more than 100K of uh, worth of prototyping a year and half those of using uh, 50 to 100K. This is the, the one on, the right, on your left. Um, this means that those teams are, represent roughly um, 20, 2,500 to 3,000 teams. Um, the rest of them, which represent the majority of the spending, are left out and continue to use the, the regular PCB manufacturing services as they offer prototyping. By, by supplying directly to, to those PCB manufacturers, by offering this printer who is superior to the current solution that they have, you can address additional 1,800 uh, customers, pretty much. Um, and they use much more ink. We assume the same uh, cap market capture ratio rates as, um, as applied by, by the Edison report to the, to the extended uh, customer's pool, and this is how we got the, the numbers. I applaud you for trying to uh, get quick wins and uh, getting cash flow, uh, particularly with a prototyping service. Um, but quick wins aren't often that quick. and. Um, uh, for example, if you're trying to use a uh, hundred odd people who are primarily technology engineers servicing a few dozen, couple of dozen customers, to those looking at mass customers, thousands of customers, how do you prevent this company from being distracted on the quick wins and focusing on the long term picture? Uh, so the way you can think about it is as a resource utilization task. With the quick wins, we're not calling for modifications uh, to the current hardware. We are calling for some small modifications uh, to the software, uh, which they ha an in-house uh, software development team can do. More, more importantly, if you look at the relationship between the manufacturer and the customer, they go through a series of distributors. And then those distributors would be selling to the PCB manufacturers who would then be offering the PCB prototyping as a service to their own customers. They're, so those final end use customers are essentially insulated from the company by a number of intermediate layers. Each of those intermediate layers can then help absorb that growth and add uh, to resource utilization to help them scale up. So the reason we call them quick wins is because they require a relatively small amount of effort by nano dimension themselves, but enable some quick cash flow returns to, and then they can focus on the longer term strategies. Other questions? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as far as I understand um, your quick wins, you, you mostly refer to prototyping as a service rather than the encryption and um, um, the artificial intelligence component. So I can clearly see that, you know, value in, in, 
in this proposition, um, and I can see how encryption impacts possible revenues. Uh, I wonder how artificial intelligence, for one, may help you reduce cost. I assume that this is the, the direction you were thinking, and whether this is really a requirement if you can if you have maybe an estimate or some kind of a ballpark figure of how much how this would impact your cost structure, if at all. So basically for the artificial intelligence piece, we're proposing that it's gonna significantly increase your printing speed, which is one of the major uh, things that the CEO mentioned, is to be able to improve the speed in the next uh, short period of time so that you'll be able to speed up this process a lot. So in terms of the cost, uh, from my understanding that there is the software team that's already doing a lot of algorithms to, to convert Gerber files into the print hub movements. So yes, definitely there will be required some machine learning expert to be on board, but having a data sign, a team of dance data scientists will be sufficient enough. And also the machine learning component, there are a lot, already a lot of existing algorithms that they could leverage. Out of the box alternative, the interface between the brain and uh, and the computer. Uh, just by, before going into it, have, did you have, did you think there is any chance you can be profitable through this strategy within two years? Um, since this is a, a very f uh, heavy R and D company. Uh, focusing on that, the current spending in this market are, are substantial. As you can see, players like DARPA um, are already in it and there are billions of dollars uh, that are already going to the research. Um, also, being the only manufacturer that can manufacture something like that in two or three years, that could be a massive uh, market opportunity. Um, if we look at the numbers for, uh, for people who are, injured, who are suffering from those conditions, um, just by, by using even the, the, the lowest uh, pricing number that, let's say, $1,000 per, per one of those chips were highly custom, customized, we're talking about a market potential of uh, north to $6 billion just for the company. Um, so, yeah, we thought that it might be uh, very profitable. Um, it just seemed that the, it seems like the R&D efforts are a little bit too, too uh, far behind uh, to justify going into this, uh, this market. Any other questions? Okay. I want to thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much from Canada.